Today we're looking at how to clear energy drains and shine. So how to get blockages out of our system and things that are draining our energy and taking our energy away. This is really important because first of all, when our energy is blocked, it's going to cause chaos with the system of orgasmic energy. So blocked energy essentially is why uh, pretty much any sexual problem is coming down to an energy block. However, um, the sexual problem, it goes way deeper than what it just seems to be. So a sexual problem is like a sign of a really deep underlying systemic problem that's affecting every part of the system. So let's have a look at the energy field. So we're really gonna have a look today at trying to understand what is the energy field? How does it work? We're gonna be looking into it in a simplified form, but nonetheless, uh, it's very, uh, um, it's very um, interesting to find out this about how the body is like actually an alchemical chamber um, that works perfectly, uh, probably when we don't know how to read and write and are living in a jungle and haven't been educated and moralized and programmed and so on. So the energy field, you feel inspired, amazing and creative and things flow when your energy is flowing. This happens when you are free of blocks and drains. And I'm sure we all have had a taste of that feeling of flowing, but then it blocks up again. So let's have a look at the science of energy because I really am not, uh, you know, taking it lightly when I say science. In fact, uh, um, this, this is an ancient system that was written down thousands of years ago. It's still used to this day across the world, for example, in Chinese medicine. And what we're talking about here is the same system as Chinese medicine. Um, and um, it works really, really well to this day in ways that perhaps science can't explain. So energy is not an abstract concept. For thousands of years, it has been documented that energy transits through certain meridians in the body. And we can, probably all can know about or can find online information about the, the acupuncture meridians. We're looking here at that same system, but a much, much deeper place to work on it, which is much deeper than the meridians that are used in acupuncture. Plus, there's the added benefit that once you learn how to do these hacks, You've got that as a skill for life. So I introduced myself yesterday. I think that you know who I am. And here is me again with the Master Chia. And now I'm going to, okay, this was not yesterday. This is important. So these are powerful energies that we are working with and they must be respected. Many Western people have played with these energies and harmed themselves. The Taoist practices that we look at are taught in specific ways and in specific orders. Malpractice can result in serious and permanent health problems. This includes taking practices out of context, for context, for example, learned from a book or YouTube video. Tantra, in my opinion, is largely mistaught today. Many Tantra teachers take Taoist exercises out of context and teach them incorrectly. Kundalini syndrome is a real thing. This energy is not a toy. I'm not trying to scare people, but at the same time, you're not gonna put your five-year-old in a Lamborghini and give them the keys, let alone put them in a space rocket and give them the controls, right? You know, this stuff, it needs to be studied properly and it needs to be practiced and learned how to actually use it effectively and correct, correctly. And with a minimum amount of training, you know, several months worth of training I'm talking about, they can be used by pretty much well, by anyone who has the volition to learn how to use it, um, they can be used to create enormous benefits in life. However, I just would not recommend to, uh, to treat it like a toy. So, and just to explain a bit about the information you're gonna be seeing here today, what you saw yesterday, what you're gonna to see tomorrow. So everything I'm covering here is based on the work that I've developed and evolved with my clients. And by the way, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a certified universal healing Tao instructor. I don't recommend learning Taoist practice from anyone who's not certified. Um, I'm also a certified Tantra educator. 
Um, so uh, I've studied this. I've also studied a degree in Chinese medicine, many other different kinds of body work courses, including tantric massage, Karsai massage, abdominal massage, gynecological massage. I have loads of experience like working on bodies and with bodies, um, as well as my coaching that's now become the biggest thing that I'm doing. So essentially, this is all coming from work I've evolved in my clients through my training, through my experience. If you're interested to follow this path with me, get in touch to apply for a consultation. So if we can just have a link in the chat so that anyone here can book a 15 minute consultation where I'm going to help you map out, uh, what, bearing in mind whatever is going on with you is completely free. The 15 minutes is just to hear about what's going on with you and give you a um, give you a guideline. If you're interested after that point in working with me, you can then let me know that and we can discuss that on a future occasion. So. This is a highly complex system that works by developing your skills to cultivate, transmute, refine and store energies. And we're going to start getting in touch today with what do those exactly mean? These are potent and volatile energies that include sexual energy that we tap into that can harm as well as heal. I don't recommend to practice it without guidance. That said, the benefits of embarking on the path are often felt in weeks of starting. Uh, this includes healing from debilitating mental health conditions and the impact is also felt on physical and sexual health. Because this work is holistic, its powerful effects are felt through every layer of life. For example, CEOs that I work with literally find benefits to their whole company within weeks of starting. Also, I can say people find their relationships, their partnerships all coming together very quickly as well when they start to implement these techniques. And as I said yesterday, this is all about implementing techniques and using these things in your life. So, okay, let's get on to this, how the body is an alchemical chamber. So this is a body and you can see there's a little dot here, another little dot here, and another little dot here, and there's one dot here at the bottom, right? So here at the bottom, the Huiyin, this is what we say is like the source of energy. And the energy travels up the back, it travels up the front and the center, but we'll look mainly at the center. And it travels through these three different Dantians, which I'll be discussing shortly. So we're created out of sexual energy and orgasm. Within us, as an organism, this is the source energy that feeds our meridian. So it comes out down here, the Huiyin, travels through the body, up the body, and then it travels in to the 12 meridians and the 12 organs from there. So you may identify connecting with this as the horny feeling you get between your legs. So when we feel arousal, that is the energy, the life force energy arising in the perineum. Um, and so if you imagine when people are regularly repressing their arousal feelings, which is of course what we're taught to do, you know, because nobody likes someone who's just uh, basically a creep, right? You know, um, um, and that's what we think will happen if you just let the sexual energy go. So we're repressing it. When we repress it, we're blocking off our life force energy. So what we're talking about here is a third way where we're actually transforming by bringing the energy up this meridian, we're transforming it and we're utilizing it. So if you imagine, okay, the, the person who's repressing their sexual energy will, will be blocking it probably around here. Um, the person who decides not to repress it, it's gonna come up a little bit and then somewhere along here, it's gonna get hit by a blockage, an emotional blockage, most likely, in which case it's going to cause kinds of behaviors. It's only if the energy really rises up to here and transforms, that it's going to be going through its put to its use. And that's what we're here to talk about today, about how to release these blockages to allow the energy to rise up into our heart where it can be put to use. So the natural flow of this energy, Jing, is to rise up and to transform in your belly from the feeling of horniness to the feeling of vitality as it becomes qi, energy in your lower dantian. So it's Jing down here. The Jing rises here into the belly, transforms into Qi. So th this is the difference between 
for example, people who are stuck in constant, um, uh, let's say, uh, certain type of expression of sexual sexual energy, which is often uh, habitual masturbation or continuously needing to orgasm and come in order to stay sort of feeling okay. And uh, that would be the energy is stuck down there. So it's kind of stuck in the base stroke sacral chakra. And when it comes up here, that energy is then being transformed into vitality. So let's have a look at alchemization. And here are those three dantians, the abdominal dantian, the heart dantian, and the crystal palace in the middle of the brain. So the natural process is to move through the three energy centers or dantians, transforming from feeling horny to feeling energized to feeling love, which is also referred to as Shen in your heart. As this energy transforms, it turns into a versatile superfood that can be used for anything. This transformation process, working properly, is what optimizes our energy levels and makes us ooze juicy life force. So this is about having like a beautiful, like um, uh, a magnetic, but a, a very pure hearted and pleasant sort of energy when this is all working. And of course, feeling really good. So let's look at blockages of energy. Blockages of energy tend to be caused by unprocessed repressed emotions. In other words, the anger that you have tucked so deep away to be a good person could be destroying your life. And I actually find and I hear this from people who, uh, um, you know, uh, they lose beloved ones and, and the beloved one was always the nicest person giving the most love and so on and so forth. And there must have been a lot of stuff being repressed, which then turned into a cancer and sickness, which is really, really sad, you know, when this happens. Um, I find uh, when I work with clients that uh, have done a lot of spiritual work uh, that often they can have suddenly just loads of anger coming up off out of nowhere. But then when we work to create the good relationship with the anger, it's very interesting to see how, um, how at that point then uh, um, all kinds of other things in their life that were falling apart actually come together. It's really, really interesting how this is all just so holistic. So uh, I refer to these as programs, for example, the program that instead of embracing a certain feeling, which is an aspect of ourself, we should feel ashamed of it and push it away. So these are all aspects of ourself, our anger, our fear, our sadness, all of these are aspects of ourselves. And when we're not in a relationship with these aspects of ourselves. It is like a kind of, we're taught to hate these aspects of ourselves, right? It's like a kind of a self-hatred. And shame plays a huge role in this. It's not an emotion in itself as such, rather a dynamic that can affect any emotion or feeling that is the result of being in a bad relationship with it and repressing it instead of learning from it. So shame is, oh, sexual feelings, Oh, anger, boom, you know, it can even be, oh, my joy, boom, you know, whatever we're hiding, because we don't feel, we don't feel or know how to express it. So energy blocks can take on physical dimension, resulting in lumps and bumps, disease, cancers, etc. And some energy blocks do have physical causes, but this is more rare. And we're going to be looking at just the emotional stroke. Uh, social causes of energy blocks. Now, the two main places we tend to get energy blocked is around the sexual center, which is just by the pubic hair and the pubic bone, and around the heart. So when we're getting blockage, blockages happening in the heart, we can literally feel lumps and bumps under the arms and spreading out into the breast and the chest which can obviously then turn into more serious things. Um, the blockages in the sexual area is you'll very often find the same lumps and bumps around the pubic bone, the top of the hair, the tops of the legs. Um, and when we talk about energy flow, we're kind of talking about the flow of chi, um, which relates to then the flow of blood 
and the flow of lymphatic fluid. So everything is connected. And when the, the energy is blocked, it, it will show in symptoms like um, poor circulation of, of blood, things like cold hands and cold feet, and just many other symptoms. So your system shutting down. Did you, did you ever hear of that lovely woman so full of love that died tragically young of cancer? In fact, statistics show really lovely people are more likely to get cancer. So people who repress their emotions a lot. If you are repressing your emotions to fit into social norms and appear as a good person, it makes you sick. I was going to say it also shuts you down sexually. It shuts down your ability to experience pleasure as well, um, which is a sign of the emotion emotions being shut down. So if you're having a hard time feeling inside of your vagina, you're having a hard time uh, lasting in bed. These are all to do with emotions being shut down. So this does not either mean you need to be all out nasty to survive. There is another way. Chinese theory sees emotions as coming in pairs that complement each other, like anger and kindness, for example. They talk about the need to have a balanced relationship with all of them. So in other words, each emotion brings about a flow of energy in a certain direction. This flow is essential for life. For example, anger brings us up and sadness brings us down, while fear moves us forward and worry keeps us in the center. So here's the exercise in, what I want you to do is look at your list of energy drains from yesterday and which item do you feel is draining you the most, the most important for you to work on. So take this factor and now write down five other factors that play in with it. By this, I mean, what are the repercussions of this drain in terms of physical health, mental health, finances, relationship and happiness? For example, could be that my anorgasmia is affecting my consciousness, my confidence as a woman and making it difficult for me to connect with others and sustain relationships. This is causing me stress and anxiety, affecting my creativity and focus and costing me both in terms of happiness and financially too, as I'm not living up to my potential. And what would your life look like did you not have this drain? So, it's so important that we become aware of, of what is draining us and what it's actually costing us as well, because it's easy. I mean, as I was talking yesterday, so just make notes of this for yourself, okay? Um, so as I was talking yesterday, you know, and I was trying to figure out, you know, what's going on with this and that, different problem like my back problem my period pains my insomnia and i was trying to treat them all like as separate things until i just said oh screw it i'm gonna try and do something about my orgasms and when i actually went to the set let's say the central symptom which was the lack of orgasms i was then able to unblock so many other problems that i just couldn't even believe were connected into my anorgasmia and I, um, yeah, you know, I went through years just not thinking it was a big thing, not thinking it was much, not thinking it was really anything until I actually had that, um, unblo I actually had that unblocking happen. So, yeah you know what i cry about it too <laughs> if i feel like crying right now i'm going to don't worry i'm in touch with my emotions but um you know i also am feeling really excited to be sharing this with everybody here and yeah i mean it's so powerful because i was literally like written off as being like completely incurable with complex post-traumatic stress disorder like i actually grew up in a cult i was really really traumatized i kind of got dumped in this weird part of America without <laughs> knowing, you know, what was $20 or how to get a job or anything when I was 16, because I wasn't like, you know, complying with, with their rules. And I was really, really severely traumatized. I ended up in an abusive relationship and I was sent to see this like top psychologist who was just like, 
It's not even any point trying to give you treatment, <laughs> you know, and I went off on my own, you know, trying to figure things out. And then thankfully I discovered this and my life has taken a very, very different turn, you know, because I mean, it's some scary things like some of the women I grew up in the, with in this cult that are my age has died, you know, already like in their thirties, I think to do with all the accumulated trauma, like, you know, it's really, really sad what happened, but all I can do is just be grateful, you know, partly to the universe and partly to my own, uh, you know, uh, sense of, uh, just, yeah, I guess perseverance is the right word. So I'm glad you're feeling it. I'm glad you appreciate it. So, and do please make sure to book a call with me, Sarah. I'd love to have a chat with you about this. So signs of blocked energy. So these can be physical or mental health problems. Sexual problems like anorgasmia, ED and PE, these are really signs of like a really central energy block and pushy sexual energy and being controlled by urges, addictions, um, whether these be so called sexual addictions, addictions to substances, things that don't even seem we should be getting addicted to, tiredness and fatigue, feeling stuck in life, being uninspired, inability to finish projects and money problems, lumps and bumps, particularly around the armpits and groin. An inhibition in the movement of blood and lymph is a sign of blocked energy too. So I'm going to go into like understanding emotions because this is what is key to actually these things that you've sit, written down that I want to have a look at. How can we actually get about to resolving them? So the emotional world can seem like a complex place. When we lack the tools to process emotions, we end up manifesting chaos. We are not taught how to understand and deal with emotions. Um, it's a huge problem. So understanding the science of emotions is essential to hone your manifestation skills. Emotions are actually pretty simple when we start to understand how they live in our internal organs and how we can transform them. We can use intention to build the energies that we want and to clear out any blockages. We can even use intention to take the gifts inside negative emotions and transform them into highly useful energies. And this is really, really key. It's really important, this last thing um, that I've just said, and we're gonna be talking about this uh, shortly, about how each negative emotion contains a gift. And when we're repressing these emotions, uh, we're really missing out on so much. And this is really, really where our power lies. And I see this again and again with clients when I teach them to have a good relationship with their negative emotions in the energy field, how they absolutely transform and so many different various problems, ranging from relationship problems to like self hatred, to many other things, addiction, and happiness, mental health problems. Once that this uh, relationship with the negative emotions is cultivated in a positive way, it becomes a really, really powerful thing for them. So, okay, let's look at actually understanding about this now. Okay, so I've got here the cycle of the five elements. This comes from Chinese medicine. And at the top, you can see the fire element, the earth element, the metal element, the water element, and the wood element going around in a circle. And you can see each of these elements contains an organ. We'll just worry about the first one. So the fire element in the heart, the earth element and the spleen, the metal element and the lungs, the water element and the kidneys, and the wood element and the liver. You don't need to worry about <coughs> oh, bless me. We don't need to worry about the second one for now. So each of these elements, okay, let's just go into a tiny little bit of in interesting trivia right here. So according to Taoist theory, when we are, we come into the physical dimension, we are one spirit. And as we hit the physical dimension, the spirit goes into shock. It fractals into five pieces. And each of these five pieces 
goes into one of the internal organs, i.e. the heart, the spleen, the lungs, the kidneys, and the liver. And each of these uh, spirits gives us a certain drive or desire. So the heart gives us the desire to connect with other people, which gives us love. The, the spleen and the spirit in the spleen, so the, the spirit in the heart is called the Shen, the spirit in the spleen is called the Yi. It gives us the ability to, to be in the present and the feeling of trust. So the, the emotion, uh, sorry, the, the spirit that goes to live in the lungs is called the, um, what is it called again, the Po, the Po. And the Po gives us the desire to connect up into the universe and the emotion of courage. And in, in the kidneys, we have a spirit called the Zhu, which gives us the drive and also the ability to, to create wisdom and the feelings of peacefulness. And then we have in the liver, a spirit called the Hun, which gives us the, uh, um, it gives us, uh, it's the part of us that, that creates in the, in the world, right? So it gives us kindness. It's all about creating in the physical dimension. So in a sense, we're talking about stuff that's very related to the Hun in this whole conversation. And there's a big connection between the Hun and the liver and the sexual energy as well. So problems with sexual problems, often there's big issues of repressed anger going on as well. So each of the positive emotion has a negative emotion that balances them. The negative is not bad and the positive is not good. Ideally, we want a balance of all of these. We can say except for hatred, which is a kind of a compression of, of emotion into the bone. Um, it's a compression of repressed emotion and it's not something that, that's particularly useful. But the other parts, um, they're all there and they're all part of us and they're all there for a reason. So cruelty, impatience, pain, worry, anxiety, mistrust, envy, sadness, grief, loss, fear, paranoia, trauma, anger, jealousy, and frustration. So we can see the worry, the trust relationship, sadness and courage, fear and peacefulness, anger and kindness, uh, impatience and love. And we can see how these complement and balance each other. So creativity and abundance. So Human beings are intrinsically creative beings with enormous powers to manifest and create when we are in balance. As our energy flows through the stages of alchemy, we are activated to heal and then to create and expand. The connection from the sexual center through the heart and into the pineal gland activates everything. This means that your power is transformed and supplemented with love and then rises up into your pineal gland where it activates your higher consciousness and connects you to your destiny. This may all sound very fantastical, but it really works. I can speak from my own experience in my own life and what I have seen happening with my clients too. So I want to go back to what you've written down, right? And having a look at these circles, right? These five circles, these five names of the emotions, right? And I want you to choose one of those circles where you feel this issue that you've chosen lies. And I want you to type earth or whatever green, the color, let's just do the color green, red, yellow. Should we go back? Let's stay here. Red yellow white blue and green so where do you feel that is the main one that's lying where your issue is so just pop that in the chat and we can go okay anger i love it right okay can we have some more going on here 
red, yellow. Yeah, laziness and unmotivated is probably a little bit of everything. Um, but uh, I would kind of say yellow. Yeah, I would kind of say yeah. No, well, no, I would say green, actually. I would say that is probably that your liver or it could be the the liver and the kidneys, it may be the kidneys. Um, so We're getting loads of yellow coming up. I'm going to talk first about yellow. I want to go on to my favorite, which is green yesterday, just because I'm being selfish. So which is green after that, I think, because as I said, I'm feeling like I'm being selfish. So, okay. I want you to, we talked about this circle. Keep typing into the chat, by the way, guys. We looked at this circle, right? But you probably noticed a little star, a little pentagram in the middle and wondered, okay, what's going on there? Okay, because this is one of the relationships. So the relationship being water feeds wood, wood feeds fire, fire feeds earth, earth feeds metal, metal feeds water. Okay. And then there's also a relationship here it's called the controlling cycle uh, water controls fire fire controls metal like it melts metal metal controls wood so it cuts down the tree wood controls earth so it holds the earth together right and earth controls water it holds the water together okay it is my opinion i'm going to say right now that the majority of problems here and you can see the arrow going across are caused by repressed anger okay now let me just check again in the chat something because i'm noticing the yellow is coming up Okay, men are putting it too. I noticed that yellow is very, very common with women, right, to put up. And as I was talking yesterday, we women are, were really taught to repress our anger. Um, but let's go on to worry anyways, okay? Let's go on to that. But just bear in mind, everything is feeding together. So we do generally work on all of these. But just to give an, give an idea, right? So to work on these within the body, it takes five weeks. And then once we've done this, oh, I hope everyone's got their genital reflexology worksheet because once we've done this layer of the body, we can then go and work in the sexual energy using these same principles, but using them on the sexual organs where the energy is getting stuck in the sexual organs. So, Okay, cool. Right. Let's have a look at worry, anxiety, mistrust and envy. And just of people who've written this down. Okay. Actually, everybody, if you know where the spleen is, please put a three in the chat. No cheating and getting on Google.
Not a lot of series. Uh, okay, guys, nobody knows where their spleen is. The only p thing people know about spleens is spleens being removed, right? So it's on the side of your stomach under here, and it's a big gland that works together with the pancreas. It secretes all kinds of fluids um, that are necessary for digestion and other things. So the spleen was considered a really, really important organ in Chinese medicine. So yeah, it's just under the rib cage. And in fact, you can just kind of find that bit of the bottom of the rib cage and just push in and up. And your spleen is kind of just there, but don't push it too hard because it won't be very happy if you do that. Okay, so the spleen is paired with the stomach. The stomach is right here in the middle. And when we are worried, we feel the worry right there in the stomach. But bear in mind that these walk as a pair in this in this tradition, right? So um, yeah, we've got them working there together, the, the spleen and the um, and the and the stomach, right? Okay. So in balance, this gives us the spirit of the spleen and the stomach it is the ability to be in the present, to be balanced, to be centered to be grounded and it's easy to see that when we're not in the present when we're not grounding when we're not being balanced that that mistrust arises the worry the mistrust not trusting the universe hmm. and we saw that beautiful yellow color and i want to invite you to put your hand over your spleen to hold your spleen, to shut your eyes, and to send love down to your spleen. So you're looking right down through your brain, down your throat, down into your chest, and you're finding your spleen, and you're literally sending a direct smile, and you're visualizing that yellow color filling your spleen. And just relax, notice what comes up. Usually people say when they do this, they get a really nice feeling, but it's actually really powerful if you do it and you get a bad feeling. And really visualize that yellow color, smile and get the peaceful feeling. And now I wanna take you to take any feeling of worry which you may well feel in your stomach, in the center, to focus into that feeling, to smile to the feeling. And as you're doing this, to move your eyes with your eyes shut from left to right, left to right, left to right, holding that thing that you're worried about. And do that 10 times. And then going back to your spleen, smile and feel more of that yellow color.
And then let's open our eyes and come back into the room. And I'm really curious, what did you experience there with that? How did that feel? Well, two of you know where the spleen was because that was because I told you, right? <laughs> So I'm really interested, especially if you're just doing this now for the first time. What went on with that? How was it? So what you guys were doing just now was cultivating energy. I don't know if I if I'm doing it right. So I was worried. Yeah, look, that's cool. Yeah. And in a way, right, that's why you get a teacher. <laughs> um, so took a while for the yellow color to appear, but gentle and relaxing. So honestly because we're doing this together as a group it's more powerful um i teach people exercises individually but i always try to bring people into groups to get them doing the exercises together because it's really really super powerful um love it mouth salivating so when energy is moving and activating we get the mouth salivating so really really interesting and we can burp and other things as well so yeah, yeah. Really cool. And um, so, so yeah, when we, uh, like I said, this, these are powerful energies, you know, so the person saying um, they were worried because they weren't doing it right. If they weren't doing it right, the thing is what you're probably doing is tapping into like a deep layer of uh, um, worry that really, really needs to be worked on. It's a little bit stuck there. So yeah, this can happen. So, okay, should we try one more technique for the, for the worry? Give me a five in the chat if you want another technique for worry. Any more fives? Okay, all right. So what we did was we cultivated energy and we grew this energy, okay? Let's have a go at transforming the energy as well. So the worry, when we get that worry feeling, right? It's in the stomach here, right? Okay, now each organ has a vibration that can be activated through a sound and is really powerful when we use these sounds, okay? We're gonna use a certain sound to vibrate our stomach, okay? To transform the worry in the stomach, okay? Bear in mind, we don't want to just get rid of all negative emotions out of the body. If you just get rid of all the negative emotions out of your body, you'll be drained because we partly operate on negative emotions, which is okay, but when it comes out of balance, we need to basically transform it right so um the sound for the element of earth is something like this here so imagine there's this big knot of worry in your stomach and what you want to do is you want to blow it out your stomach so the the technique is like you breathe in and it's like a sound something like for me it's like something between the wind and one of these coffee machines making a cafe latte right so the sound it can be a little bit guttural in the throat it's something like this so you kind of lean forward and literally like you're blowing 
the worry out of the stomach, okay? So let's try this once all together. And it helps to lean forward and to really visualize what you're doing and try to get a little guttural sound going in your throat if you can. So breathing forward again and make the sound. And breathing in. And breathe in yellow light. Feel the trust coming into your body. Feel the yellow light in your stomach and spleen. And breathing in and again, make the sound. <sighs> Breathe in some more yellow, feel that trust, feel yourself centered grounded and connected into Mother Earth. And just in case we did one wrong, let's get one more, blow out the stomach with. And just really breathe more of that beautiful yellow light into your being and just really feel yourself in your center, grounded into your navel, centered and connected into Mother Earth. And even with a sense that the universe, everything, everything is being watched over by the universe and it's all taking place in perfect timing. And I'm really interested to hear, how are we feeling now from this? How is this going? Oh, yawn, so many yawns. That's another thing that happens when the energy is activating, yawning, saliva. Mm, I'm feeling a load of saliva. And often when you're talking, your saliva dries up. So. If I start drooling at the side, you've got to all oh, forgive me, okay? <laughs> Peaceful. Yawn. Oh, it's so funny, isn't it? So you guys have all caught the yawns, right? Okay. I don't want to put you all to sleep. So before we end, because I have a meeting about flirting at 8 o'clock. Um, <laughs> so... Ah, breathing in the left side is better than the right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I noticed that too. Really interesting, isn't it? So we're going over to the right side now, to the liver. Right, that's really, really good. And the color of the liver is green. So let's shut our eyes and let's send some beautiful green energy into the liver. And if you're able to connect with the feeling of anger, I want you to take your feeling of anger, I want you to take your rage, and I want you to give it absolute, unconditional love. It's as if you're seeing a screaming child on the floor and you do what any decent human being would do, which would be to pick the child up and hug it. So smile, sending this love into your liver, really, really feeling that connection, the emotion of anger. And if you're feeling that anything in there is just a bit 
jittery, jumpy, not quite as smooth flowing as you would like it to be. Let's use the sound and I want you to open your eyes and I want you to make the sound shh, as if you're saying shh, what's that sound? And as you do this, I want you to feel that your anger is transforming into beautiful, creative energy, into fantastic, amazing boundaries around you, into feelings of assertiveness, into horny, juicy, beautiful, orgasmic feelings as well. Because these are all connected. So, smiling back there into your liver, feeling that green light. And then opening your eyes and make the sound. I want you to really take your anger and embrace it and just really feel it is the life affirming, empowering force it is. You don't need to fear your anger anymore because loving your anger will not make you into a violent psycho. It will actually make you much, much calmer and much stronger and much more creative and much more inspired. In fact, the liver meridian starts in your big toe. It travels up right past your sexual organs. So it nourishes your sexual organs. It travels into your sides and it comes up into your eyes and it gives you vision. So your sense of vision comes from your liver, but your inner vision. So having your vision, having your sight, your insight, being able to see your destiny that is all coming from having a good relationship with anger and with your liver, you really, really need it. So, I want to just finish off with my PowerPoint. We're almost finished now. So, most people are holding in a part of themselves that they hide and protect at all costs, creating a hardened shell around who they are authentically. This is kind of like the ego. This relates to a combination of trauma and programming, although bear in mind most programming is being done by traumatizing people at a young age. These are usually based on belief systems around lack of self worth, because ultimately this is the dynamic that we get when we repress huge parts of ourselves. Trauma isn't an incident in and of itself, it is a cluster of feelings and beliefs around an incident that aren't processed. Once you release this cluster, you are free to live your life. So hacking the energy field, which is what we've just done, we've just cultivated and we've just transformed energy. So that's like of the five, that's two we've just done. It's actually pretty simple. Many people work on these issues with psychology or similar, meaning they spend years often going round and round in circles without a clear result. I'm not against talking about things. I'm all for talking about things, in fact. But this can also be painful and relies on awareness of events and emotions that may not be possible. Through the techniques that I teach, you can hack straight into that energy field painlessly, avoiding years of therapy or messing around with YouTube videos and freebies and clear the energy that is stopping you from being you. So my, my clients often report major results with this in two to four weeks. Obviously, they need to be following the exercises and feeding back to me um, if uh, to be getting those results. So, oh, okay, these are not even the right key results, but we don't key points, but we don't need the key key points. So, I'm going to save any further questions until tomorrow as I have a meeting now talking about flirting. Green energy, beautiful. And I would love to have a chat with everybody here, especially the ladies here.
Um, so do please use that link and book a chat with me. It's a free 15 minute consultation. It's not going to involve me selling anything to you unless you ask me to sell something to you. So eight o'clock it is and I'm on time to my flirting meeting. It's great being a Taoist, right? See you all tomorrow. Bye.